Okay, the first thing I want to say is I'm going to cheat and change the name of the project for this project, but I'll explain why as we go through it. Um, so I'm going to talk about Hydra in Hull. Um, first of all, Hydra. What is Hydra? Hydra is a collaborative project between uh, the following bodies, the University of Hull, with the US partners at the University of Virginia and Stanford University, uh, working closely with, uh, well, originally it was Fedora Commons, then now it's um, DuraSpace, um, and we also have a technical or technology partner in MediaShelf. Um, the project itself is unfunded. Um, it came out of a, dis a desire by those partners to want to get together uh, because we all used Fedora as our institutional repository and we all wanted to find a way in which we could create a reusable framework for developing interfaces over that Fedora repository. Um, so the aim ultimately was to walk to work towards a reusable framework for multi-purpose, multi-function, multi-institutional repository-enabled solutions. We're all using Fedora. Our primary aim is to provide a solution for Fedora, but the way we've modeled the solution is intended to be in a way that could be useful to other repository platforms as well. The project started in 2008, uh, and we initially set ourselves a three-year time frame to work on this together, and that's now coming to an end this September. Uh, but as I'll come to describe, we are in, in a sense now continuing indefinitely um, as partners uh, within the Hydra project as it continues to develop. Um, as such, this project, Hydra in Hull, was essentially taking the outputs of that Hydra project and implementing them at the University of Hull to enable to us to better um, embed our repository as a regular tool within the environment, uh, environment of the university. So we started in February with the other projects. We're running through to the end of September, slightly shorter simply because we felt we had to get this up and running for the new academic session. Um, we're working with MediaShelf, the technology partner in the project, to implement Hydra. I'll describe their role a bit more later when we talk about the technology, but ultimately they have uh, provided a lot of uh, input, um, and the, the, their role as part of this project is to do a lot of the implementation, help us with a lot of the work, but also carry out a lot of knowledge transfer, because ultimately at the end of this, we need to be able to sort of take it away as a development platform and work with it ourselves. And I'm very pleased to say that the developer we have had working on this and a colleague of his have picked up this, this, all this up and have absolutely loved working with it to the extent that we know we're going to be in a good place um, going on uh, when, with um, further developments. We had three phases to the project. One was a read-only interface, uh, which we did by April. 20, uh, April. Uh, then up to June, or at least maybe pushing into July, we focused on ingest and metadata edit functionality. So the same interface can allow you to, do, uh, to access the database as a user for read-only purposes, but also if you have the permissions to log in and do ingest and edit and delete. Um, and then by the end of September, we'll have full CRUD capability uh, for a limited range of content types, genres, and uh, Alex. Um, that's uh, key to the success of Hydra is its ability to flexibly deal with different content types in different ways. Um, and ultimately, we will be replacing our existing repository interface at, by the end of September as well. So um, Hydra, as I mentioned, is about developing flexible interfaces over a repository. Um, and essentially so that you can manage different content types within the same repository, but through essentially the same interface but that that interface responds to what that content type is and displays or presents you with different uh, displays according to um, that content type and also allows you different workflows um, according to the content type. Um, from our perspective, Hydra is about supporting embedding by allowing us to use a single repository for multiple content types so that from a point of view of an end user, they're not having to go to this place for images and that place for research and that place for learning outputs or materials. They can come to one place and they can access it all through that one place. We also would like to think that it enables, we want it to be able to support take-up because the whole aim of the repository, like so many, is we want other people to interact with it. We want other people to put stuff in. We can't just do it all ourselves in the library. So the aim is that by using these flexible interfaces, you can present people with... Uh, for example, an interface that allows our committee section to input committee minutes 
uh, into the repository, which may be different to the interface that we present to um, our lecturers who are putting up open educational resources. So there are those sort of create interfaces, but then there are separate management interfaces for edit and delete, which allow the library staff to have greater and wider access to the records and do more. Essentially, Hydra is about providing a framework to support adaptability, recognizing that when it comes to dealing with digital content, it's only, there's only going to be more, there's only going to be different more as we go over time. And we wanted to have a framework which allowed us to adapt to that, those differences, those changes as we went along without having to do something completely new again. So four key capabilities of Hydra is that it supports any kind of record or metadata. Um, I mean, that's partly underpinned by the fact that we're using Fedora, but essentially the model of Hydra is that it, um, it's, the type of content it is is irrelevant. We can deal with it. But we can do object-specific behaviors. So, as I mentioned, you could have different templates, different displays for different types of material. But you could also tailor those views according to the domain. So, for instance, um, research office or discipline-specific materials. You could have a set of uh, interfaces that uh, meet the needs of chemistry. Um, and the intention is that whatever those tweaks are, that they are easy to augment, they, they, you can override them, and it's all done locally based on this framework that we are, we're implementing as part of this project. Um, key to the Hydra implementation or the project has been the need to develop uh, partnerships with um, whoever wishes to use Hydra. Um, we're working with our US partners. We're very keen that other people who have an interest in Hydra can take this and work with us on this as well. So we are essentially building the community around Hydra because we feel that in order to sustain that, that is actually just as, if not more important than the underlying technology or technical implementation. So we have an established partnership amongst the original partners. Um, MediaShelf weren't originally a partner, but they've now come in. Um, we have Northwestern and Notre Dame universities in the States waiting in the wings. We are at the moment going through the process of establishing a legal basis. I've said semi-legal there. It's, we don't want it to be too formal. We want it to be formal to the extent that people feel confident in what they are signing up to. And we want to make sure that people feel confident in what they're contributing code-wise to the project in terms of copyright ownership and so forth and so on. Um, but we don't want people to feel that they're going through some onerous process of joining this big organization. And as part of our ongoing discussions, and we have now regular quarterly steering group meetings, um, next one's in September, followed by one in December, um, the key to those is about establishing the Hydra community and the sustainability of that and the technology that's coming out of it. Hydra in Hull, specifically, is about producing a UK reference implementation. I mean, it's about producing our institutional repository, but it's also about uh, providing a UK reference implementation for anyone who'd like to know more about Hydra. Um, it provides local knowledge that others can tap into rather than having to rely on what people are doing in the States. Um, and we would hope to, that it would form the basis of uh, a Hydra UK or maybe a European Hydra community, depending on how interest develops. Key to the, um, well, so in terms of implementation, there's, t there's the slightly sort of non-technical content management aspect. And that is that uh, key to organizing all of this content so you can flexibly work with it is coming up with a content model in order to describe it in a consistent manner. Uh, and so a lot of what Hydra has done has been about actually working out how you can best describe the structure of the content so that it can be managed in this flexible way. And those guidelines are available on our wiki. Um, technically, Hydra has been implemented using uh, Fedora. It's based on Fedora. But it's essentially a Ruby on Rails uh, framework, interface framework over Fedora, um, which uses then Blacklight as an interface for end-user interaction. Um, and essentially is all built on a solar index of the repository content. And then it uses a, a series of Ruby gems uh, which have been developed in partnership partly with Media Shelf, but also through the, um, the project um, to provide the flexibility, the, te the template flexibility. So what about Hydrangea? This project was banded, badged as Hydrangea in Hull. Um, Hydrangea was, uh, I think, as everyone now realizes, a very bad extension of the term Hydra. 
and didn't really work as well as we'd liked. But it was essentially in our initial reference beta implementation. And to that extent, it very much served its purpose. It enabled us, gave us a focus around which we were developing. It allowed us, all the partners, to get up and running. So there is, act, there is a live implementation at the University of Virginia at the moment. We're nearly live. Uh, Stanford are very much down that road as well. Um, but it's now been deprecated officially as a piece of software in its own right. Um, we do have an open GitHub account uh, for all the software that is produced by the projects and all the partners, and therefore all the current code is available through that site if you wish to have, uh, have a play. So, the technical bit. I just want to, I'm going to sort of cheat here, and I'm going to borrow... Um, I'm going to borrow a prezi that was given at the Open Repositories Conference about um, the technology here, just to describe it in brief. So we have four components. We have uh, Fedora, the underlying repository. Uh, we have Solar, the index. Uh, and we have a tool which was called Solarizer, which effectively takes all the content from the repository and indexes it. And then over Fedora itself, we have the Hydra head plugin, which are all the templates that allow interaction with the content, the, in, the create, the, uh, the update, and the delete. And then over the solar index, we have the blacklight interface, which allows the end user interaction as a read-only repository. So, sums up the, the, the areas of functionality according to those, um, uh, those different components. Um, why do we use Blacklight? Well, Blacklight is a next-generation library, uh, library catalog interface, but it's been designed specifically so that you can use, use it with other types of content as well. It provides faceted search and discovery. Um, it's largely metadata agnostic, so although it was originally designed to work with Mark metadata, we'll be using Mods metadata by default, but it could, it's also been used with EAD for digital archives as well. It's content-aware. A lot of the flexibility comes from how Blacklight can display things. Um, and it has a strong development community that's continuing to develop. Blacklight 3 was recently released uh, for general use. Um, oh no, back on. Uh, the create, edit, submit, and edit is essentially about taking uh, the Fedora Blacklight in, uh, environment and adapting it by adding in Ruby gems, which allow you to add functionality uh, around uh, edit. Uh, create and delete. Um, and then, well, th th there was a further point description about Solarizer, which is the bit in the middle, which is the bit that draws it all together by sho shoving content to and from wherever it needs to be. Okay. So... The other presentation given at Open Repositories was about our community development, the quest for the Hydra, and that's also available as an open prezi if people would like to see that. Okay, this. I've described those technologies, but why those technologies briefly more? We're all Fedora users. Solar is a very powerful indexing tool. So it has, it's used by Blacklight, which had prior development at Virginia and Stanford, so there's a logical connection there. But it had that wonderful adaptability for different types of content. And we're using Ruby because it provides us with a wonderful agile development environment. It's an excellent MVC structure, so it's very organized in the way that the development takes place. And there's excellent testing tools. So we have continuous integration. Every co all code that's upload created and developed is automatically tested before it can get incorporated in the, in the software product overall. So just to whiz through some screenshots, I'm um, afraid all our t t environment is behind a, a firewall at the moment. Uh, we have our test uh, standard interface, facets on the left-hand side. If you log in, we can change the display of the screen so that you see different things according to who you are when you log in. Uh, standard uh, search results. Blacklight gives you this rather nice way of tracking the search as you've done it um, so you see exactly where you are as when you've done the search. Um, individual displays. Um, fairly standard in so far as in terms of how the things are displayed. Uh, we couldn't resist adding the QR code. Um, but the idea is here is this is a thesis, so that's displayed like that. But if you look at a journal article, then we basically it's a different template. So we can change it. The bulk of it's the same, 
but all the publication information has been separated out so that it stands out because it's relevant to that content. Um, this is one of the edit pages, uh, fairly clean, simple, nothing fussy. Uh, but again, that can vary according to what's required. Um, and a create screen for people who wish to uh, use it and users adding their own content. Usability testing was carried out early on. Um, very positive response. Looks nicer than the current, ver current version. More professional, cleaner, clear, uh, simpler. So plenty of advice on improvements as well. Um, and we're endeavoring to address those. Um, and I think as mirrored, I think, by one of the other projects, we only had a few people, but only a few people provide valuable feedback, and it's well worth doing. So contacts and links. Um, and more on Hydra. Thank you.